Yo, what is up guys? Hope you're all having a fantastic day. So 343 just revealed a ton of info on the upcoming May update that is going to drop on May 10. And this isn't just any update, it's a pretty big update, a lot of good changes. And not only that, but over on Discord, 343 did kind of like a, uh, I don't know what you would call it, I guess. I, it was honestly another update, I guess you could say. They're doing a bit of a Q&A too, so it's kind of a mix of the two. And from that Discord update that they did, we actually got some answers to what we've all been waiting for for so long, and that is cross-core. And they also shared a bunch of other stuff on there as well, which we're gonna all break down in this video. So let's begin with the May update. Once again, this will be releasing next Wednesday, which is May 10th. And with that update, we'll begin a new mode, which is called Super Fiesta. Now, if you've played Halo 5, you know exactly what this is, but if you haven't, this is basically just Fiesta on steroids. Instead of the regular weapons, you get the campaign variants. But yeah, if you enjoy using the campaign equipment, the campaign weapons, you're definitely going to enjoy this mode. I think it's going to be a good addition. So not only that, but for the people who play a lot of ranked, ranked King of the Hills getting some updates. Honestly, to sum it all up, it's basically <laughs> reverting to like more of a classic King of the Hill. The initial hill spawn has been reduced from 15 to 5 seconds. The wind up period to score has been removed, which I honestly found quite annoying in the newer one. You would have to like step in the hill and then you'd have to wait for like a second until you can actually like start scoring. So they removed that. Um, so yeah, essentially they basically just made it more like classic king of the hill. So we're also getting some major sandbox changes and some of these I don't really agree with, but let's start off with the first thing. So the disruptor is getting tweaked. And so what they're doing is they're actually increasing the rate of fire, which is definitely interesting. Interesting. They're also increasing the super combined damage and here's the one that I don't necessarily agree with They're actually removing the damage over time if you've used the uh, Disruptor when you put a few shots into someone, you know, it super combines and then once it super combines it leaves like an electrical kind of effect It like shocks the player a bit and it prevents them from regening shields, which I thought was a really cool concept But yeah, that is gone entirely and I don't know it feels more just like a buffed up pistol at this point I'm not sure how I feel about that, but uh I don't know we'll see we'll see how it goes so let's move on to another sandbox change which is the spike grenades now this one I honestly agree with entirely I think this is this is perfect so to really sum it up the halo infinite spike grenades are becoming I mean I, I it's literally just becoming the halo 3 spike grenades which if you don't know how the Halo 3 spike grenades worked, it was more of a like a, uh, how would you say, like a directional or horizontal kind of grenade. You'd stick it to walls and if you're like in front of it or whatever, you know, the spikes would get you. But yeah, it made the spike grenade really unique. And in Halo Infinite, it sort of worked that way, except honestly, it was just easier to use because the spikes would actually track you down. If anything, it was kind of more of a better frag grenade at times. Because once again, this freaking you just stick it or you throw it out on a wall and the freaking spikes would just chase the player down. So they're also increasing the amount of spikes it shoots from 8 to 16. So not only that, but the dynamo grenades got changes as well now this grenade oh my goodness this grenade was just like super op my goodness there was times where i could like annihilate a whole squad just by chucking two of these in a room or something and it would just get them all weak they could barely move and i would just kill so many of them this grenade like if used really well like my goodness it destroys even if you just throw it at someone, it literally just tears their shields down so quickly. So the changes that it got is the area effect got reduced. So you'll no longer be able to, well, at least I think you will no longer be able to, uh, you know, take out like squads of enemies with this thing. So you got to be a little more precise how you throw it. They also reduced the chain reaction distance and they've removed its movement slowdown properties, which this one I don't necessarily agree with. This is another change that I'm like, uh, I, don't, I just don't really agree with it because I think that's what made this unique as well. The same with like the disruptor, you know, preventing regen and then also for the dynamo grenades where it slowed down enemies. I think that was really cool. But this one I think is more understandable because it was this grenade overall was just really OP. But uh, I, I think it does suck just seeing it kind of remove the movement slowdown properties because uh, yeah, it just made it pretty unique and so it also seems they slightly increased its damage so they actually have a development note here saying how they want it to feel so they basically say that they want it to um they want it to make a more contained threat so if you get like trapped in one of them you're basically screwed is kind of how it works so i don't know we'll see how it turns out once we actually get to play it i'll probably have like some comparison videos comparing the grenades now and then to better like show you guys how it works but uh yeah moving along here the biggest change of them all this is a massive change man this is going to change the gameplay forever for them ranked players they're not going to like this change man 
th they're not gonna like this change this is such a big change oh my goodness so the shroud screen it's only gonna have one charge now so forge is also getting a ton of quality of life updates i've seen a lot of forgers uh you know give feedback about like there being issues and stuff and so i guess they're like fixing some of that they're also adding like pc screenshot uploading and something that's really cool is that we're also getting an fps counter on xbox and this also apparently is going to help forgers so that way they can like determine if their maps like actually like perform well and stuff and don't drop a lot of frames and all that kind of stuff and for people who just want to you know see their frames how many frames they got so that's a nice little quality of life update there and this is pretty huge as well i think this one's pretty huge so we're also getting some ui updates which i think is also a massive good change so one of those changes is the custom browser is now going to be accessible from the custom game option so currently right now you would have to tab over to the community tab and then you go down and then it says i think custom game browser or something like that oh now here's another big one and i think this is going to be really good as well so currently right now you can only see five playlists when you go to multiplayer you can only see five playlists and you have to like scroll down well now they're going to change that and bump it up to 10 so you can see more playlists at once um so that should definitely help out all right so here's another massive change that i think a lot of you guys will like and that's the ability to actually purchase bundles uh just by going to the customization menu so instead of waiting for like your bun the bundle you want to rotate in the shop or you know maybe they never brought it back or whatever instead of having to go to the shop you're going to be able to purchase it in the customization menu unfortunately i don't think you can just purchase like a single item i think if you go to that one item it takes you to the bundle that contained it is what i'm getting at here and currently it's only a selection of bundles from previous seasons but they did say they plan to add more over time um so yeah this is a good change although i don't necessarily agree with it taking you to the bundle i think you should just be able to buy the one item you want by itself uh but we'll see once the update drops and we'll check that out i'll definitely make a video on that just to see if we can get like a better understanding of it but currently yeah it seems like it just takes you to the bundle instead of like actually being able to purchase that single item um and yeah of course there's like other various bug fixes and of course i'll also be leaving the link to the article in the description down below so if you guys want to get into like the nitty gritty details like the bugs and stuff like that uh definitely check it out now let's take a look at the discord uh update they had i don't know what you would call it they were just like on a discord doing like a i guess like a community update it was kind of odd because like I'd expect this stuff to be in the blog thing they do, but, um, I don't know. It was a little odd. I mean, I think it was cool, but like, I still think it was kind of odd. It was just kind of out there because I don't think a lot of people are going to see this one. I mean, there's people who don't even go on Halo Waypoint already. So I think the discord call things they did is a little more niche, but, um, yeah, I don't know. Anyways, let's get, <laughs> let's get into the details. So yeah, they were doing like a community update thing on discord. I don't know what you would call it. I think it's on like, it's called discord stage or something. Not exactly sure how it works, but anyways, in that call, they did like a bit of a Q and A and also like revealed more info about like season four and some other stuff that's coming. So let's start with the first one, which is experimental playlist. So it seems like we're going to be getting experimental playlist from now. And from what they explain, it's basically just them uh, releasing some playlist earlier. And it's like a kind of like a testing kind of thing. Um, and I think that's going to be very interesting. And so it's a way to just get it into players hands a lot quicker. Of course, I'm assuming it's going to be like, you know, still functional. It's kind of like that same thing they said. I was like way back then. I don't know when it was, but they said that they're going to start doing stuff like that where they release things a bit earlier, like the custom games browser, where it doesn't exactly like 100% work, but it's like 90% or something like that. Uh, but anyways, I hope you get the point there. They're going to start doing that with playlists. And yeah, they're going to be called Combat Workshop because they actually did reveal a May count calendar for all the modes that are going to be rotating in which i'll go ahead and show you guys right now um yeah and we had a calendar like this for last month i think where it shows what's rotating in and all that and so yeah they're gonna start doing this experimental stuff on may 16th and yeah they just call it combat workshop so they're not gonna put the exact name of the mode they're gonna you know experiment with so they're just gonna call it combat workshop so whenever you see combat workshop that just means it's an, it's an experimental uh playlist and they're testing something out and yeah we'll be able to like uh play it and give feedback i think they said they're gonna do like surveys or something for it so they get feedback now the cool part is is that they actually revealed what the first one will be which like i said was on may 
May 16th, and they revealed what mode that's going to be, and that is big team heavy. I honestly didn't think we were going to get this uh, this season. I thought we were going to get it like season four or something, but it seems like we're getting it in uh, season three here towards the ending. Oh, I guess I should explain what big team heavies is. So if you don't know what it is, it's basically just big team battle, but uh, with actual like vehicles where it's just heavy vehicles, like all the really strong ones, like the scorpion, the banshee, the wasp, stuff like that, the wraith, instead of just having like your standard warthog and stuff, all that gets replaced with the heavier weapons, the heavy hitters. Alrighty, so let's move on to the second thing they talked about in this Discord call, and that is a 2v2 doubles community playlist. Now, this makes me a little sad because I was hoping we'd get a BTB community playlist, but it seems like they're going the doubles route currently right now. So the community playlist are the ones that are, are the playlist that have the community, community made forge maps, like the one we currently have right now. Uh, where they throw in a bunch of forge maps and so yeah this time instead of 4v4 it seems like we're in some 2v2 doubles community playlist it's gonna be a bunch of 2v2 forge maps that are in this playlist and so they actually do kind of share what maps are coming to uh this playlist they said they were looking at the forge hub maps that they did for their 2v2 tournament and that they cherry picked some of the maps there so as soon as I heard them say that, I went digging for <laughs> this tournament. And yeah, Forge Hub actually did host a tournament called like Dual Tacular or something where people had to make doubles maps and they did like a tournament on it, I think. Or I think it was just a uh, Forge contest. I don't think it was a tournament, if I remember correctly. I think it was more of a like Forge contest, seeing who could make the best uh, 2v2 maps. So Forge Hub actually did make a video showing the dual tacular finalists and yeah he showed the top 10 and so yeah I should have that playing in the background so shout out to uh, Forge Hub. I think it's some of these maps that may make it into that playlist. Don't know which ones but uh, yeah take your pick I guess <laughs> just guess which ones you think will be in there. They all look pretty pretty dang well especially that flood one I really like that kind of like high charity flood map. So another thing they talked about is having something like the MCC Match Composer in the works for Halo Infinite. So if you don't know what that is, it's basically just a way to allow you to pick and choose what you want to play. If you want to have like a specific mode only, I think that's what they're going for. Like say if I only wanted to play Big Team Capture the Flag or something like that, I think you'll probably be able to do that um they said they're making something like it so it's not going to be the exact same so another thing they talked about in this discord call is career progression they actually do mention that they have some info for it soon and that's going to be revealed uh pretty soon later i don't know how soon but i'm assuming uh i don't know probably like with like once we get closer to season four because to me it seems like we definitely are going to get this system in season four is what it seems like so yeah, we're going to get some more info about that pretty soon. So we also got a bit more info on campaign AI. Honestly, I mean, it wasn't much, but they basically just confirmed that they're working on it and that it's coming. They don't reveal like when it's going to come, but yeah, they, they just say they're working on it and that it is as cool as people think it will be. So uh, yeah, definitely exciting. Another thing is Plaza. So if you don't remember a while back ago, they said that a Plaza remake was going to happen in uh, or release in season three. Now it's a Forge remake, just like the pit. And uh, yeah, we were supposed to get it sometime season three and they gave us a bit of info on this as well. They <laughs> basically just said that there's no update on it. Um, so I don't know, who knows? Maybe that's going to get pushed back. Now let's get into what I think most of us were very curious about because I, I see this asked all the time. I mean, I myself included, like, I don't know. I honestly have no idea why they haven't addressed this. And to be honest, we didn't get much on it, but at least they actually like, you know, gave us something and acknowledged it. I do want to give a quick shout out to uh, Halo Hub here as he actually captured it. I guess they were in Discord chatting or something. But uh, yeah, we have Sketch here who is like a 343 uh, manager, community manager or something like that. And yeah, so he basically says that they don't have any updates to share with Cross Core and that they will share one as soon as they're able to. <laughs> um... I honestly can't remember the last time we got anything cross core. I think it was divisors and that was it. And that was back in like season two, I think. So um, it's a little sad, but at least they acknowledge that, you know, we've been asking. Uh, but I don't know. I guess we'll see what happens. To me, that seems like bad news, though. I think they're going to have to like break it down and say that they're probably not going to do it anymore um, is what I'm getting at because it's, it's taken them this long to really say anything. And I think they're like, they probably aren't going to really do much with it is what I'm getting at. So not only that, but someone asked if like we're ever going to get like campaign stuff again about Halo. Because if you haven't noticed, um, there was like a lot of like layoffs at 343 and a lot of them had to do with, you know, the people who work on campaign and stuff. So we got Sketch here and he says that they can't imagine Halo ever having 
they can't imagine Halo never having campaign experiences again. Um, and then he just continues to say that they have no details to share about that today. I'm pretty sure like the last thing they're doing right now is working on campaign, which is, you know, just a sad truth. It seems like all their focus right now is on multiplayer. And I don't know. I mean, I'd love to obviously get more story content and stuff like that. But unfortunately, I honestly don't think we're going to get any of that until like five years or something like that. Who knows? Maybe they could like surprise us. Uh, but I, I don't have much hope in that. So that about wraps up this entire update through the May update that they posted on Halo Waypoint and the Discord call they had uh, sharing more info about like season four and just other stuff like that. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. I think this May update is definitely going to be fun. It's going to be like the last thing before we get into season four. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it looks like an overall good update. It's going to vary up the gameplay a bit with the new grenade changes and stuff like that. And of course, Super Fiesta is just super fun. So I'm definitely going to enjoy that one. Anyways, consider subscribing and liking the video as it shows your support and I do appreciate it. Also, consider becoming a channel member to further show your support. And of course, you also get a few perks with that. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.